Just, just a combination of factors, honestly, and then poor decision making in general. You know, we've all we've all been the culprit of it. You know, maybe uh, thinking somebody was going to backdoor and then they didn't, or thinking that somebody was going to come up a handoff and they didn't. You know, some some of those things are to your point familiarity and just like chemistry. What was the difference in that end of the second quarter? You guys were right there, and then just a sequence like that, were able to, able to get separation. I think it was a 14-2 run. Yeah, uh, they they had two big runs, and um, those are the ones that we, we can't afford to have happen. Other than that, obviously, the game was a pretty uh, well-fought game, especially coming off a nail bite like we had last night, back-to-back, flying in, getting in mad late. Uh, you know, we just those two runs are were the backbreakers. What happened in that that specific sequence at the end of the second quarter? Oh, I mean, uh, they hit shots. I believe Vic hit hit a couple, obviously, and you know he's a great player. Um, and then, obviously, if they hit shots, we didn't get stops, and then we didn't come back down and, and score. We also had a couple turnovers. Um, you know, and, and and to your point, you know, some of them aren't uh, always forced. You know, some sometimes they're they're just uh, bad decisions on our end. Defense on the perimeter. I mean, obviously, you're missing three of your better defensive forwards, um, but uh, 16 out of 24, I think, is something like that that they were from three. I mean, can you just can you chalk it up to that, or is it something more there? Uh, no, I mean, I don't think there's there's something more there. I mean, I've said did a wonderful job of uh, hitting shots. You know, this is the NBA. They they also have great shot makers. Um, you know, some things that you don't always account for, obviously. Doug McDermott is a phenomenal shooter. You know he's going to probably hit shots, right? Corey Joseph, I mean, is a really good basketball player, but less so of a shooter. So you don't necessarily account for him hitting a bunch of threes. So, you know, some of that is part what you expect, and some of it is unexpected. So, you know, it's a little bit of everything. How impressed were you with Rodion's the way he's played this season and the game he had tonight? Oh, extremely impressive. You know, he brings a lot of energy. Um, he's a high effort guy. Uh, I think everybody's surprised or pleasantly surprised, I guess, uh, with the way he's been shooting the ball, um, which is a huge added bonus. But uh, we, we knew coming in after the training camp that he had that he had a chance to be effective for us. And he's just kind of showing you guys what, what we've been able to see for about a month or so now. And Coach, you talked a little bit about the, the, the energy on the second half of back-to-backs and just growing as a team in that regard. You mentioned coming in late, which is something outside of your control. But it, was that kind of Coach's message in the locker room also, just about the type of... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Coming in late ain't an excuse. I was, I was, just, I was just talking about like the, the sequence of a back-to-back. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to take the next step and be one of the better teams in the league, we have to learn how to impose our will on, uh, on the other team night in, night out. Uh, do what we're going to do, uh, stick to our principles every single time. And, uh, you know, that's probably the, the biggest thing and the biggest next step that we have as a unit. Do you think that's the biggest difference? I mean, you, it was a 10-point game going into the fourth quarter despite what happened in the first half and everything. I mean, you guys were still right there. And then just because it's such a strong team, they, they can sort of in the final quarter impose their will on you at this at this point because they're, they're the best team you've played probably so far. Um, yeah, no, I mean... Grant, like you said, they're they're a great team, right? I mean, I think just like for the next step is our for our team in terms of being a good team, you know, it's do we take that ten point lead at the start of fourth and cut it to four, you know, or cut it to six versus letting that go to sixteen, you know, that that's just the that's the difference in the game, you know. I mean, obviously they're a great ball club. I mean, they're not the Warriors, you know what I mean? Like, no no offense. So yeah, like they're they're a great team, but. For us, like our next step as a unit is, all right, guys, it's at 10. You know, how do we get this to six in the first two, three minutes? You know, and, and make them call the first timeout or get it to four and make them call, you know, the timeout. Make them have to readjust and reevaluate and change the, the, the focus, the, the tenor of the game versus obviously going to 16 or 18. And then they feel like, okay, well, 20 point lead in the, Fourth quarter, like you're not coming, you're probably not coming back from that unless you get outrageously hot. You know what I mean? So, I would I would say that's that's more of it.